Blue Jeans is telling me recording has started. That's a good sign. There's not really anything I have to add to introduce the presentation. So I'm just going to give you the yeah. floor, Sean. To, to I'll go ahead and share and my screen. And, uh, uh, if I'm being recorded, just a reminder that all everything that I share is uh, within is my views. My views alone is not a reflection of the Georgia Institute of Technology or my current yeah. employer. Yeah, you got you got to insert that, don't you, in case you got Yep. Something. Uh, so yeah, you all can okay. see my screen. It should say intro to Parley Debate. Yeah, and um, and we'll if it's okay with you, we'll probably present for 20 minutes and then stop the recording and then have a bit of Q&A and then disperse. Yeah, I'm literally cool if you all interrupt me with questions or whatnot, or I can go through this to the best of yeah. my knowledge. Okay. Uh, it'll okay. be real basic what the structure of the debate looks like uh, and, you know, whatnot. So uh, intro to Parley Debate. I'll go ahead and get started. I assume everyone can hear me. Uh, so there are a lot of different types of, there are really three different types of parlay debate that are prevalent right now uh, on the college circuit, and that's uh, IPDA, which is your International Parliamentary Debate Association, your NPDA, which is your National Parliamentary Debate Association. Relevant to us specifically as Georgia Tech is also what's called the GPDA or the Georgia Parliamentary De Debate Association. That kind of falls under NPDA. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, and then also BP, which is British Parliamentary Debate, a.k.a. Worlds. Um, there's also other types of the debate in general. Um, we've already talked about policy debate, the Lafayette debates. Um, there's a couple other nuanced stuff that kind of shows up here and there. But in general, uh, parley debate is uh, uh, falls into these three primary, primary uh, categories. Uh, so going through them. Relatively quickly, key points, IPDA, your International Parliamentary Debate Association, is 1v1 debate. Um, there, it's an affirmative versus the negative team. Uh, it's, all these are going to be affirmative versus negative, but in this instance of IPDA, they're specifically called uh, the affirmative team and the negative team. Uh, the other forms of debate have some, like, funky nuances for what they actually call the affirmative and the negative. Uh, for purposes of the presentation, everything's basically going to be just be framed as affirmative versus negative. Uh, there are some 2v2 variants. They're not substantial, specifically in Georgia and the local circuit. Uh, the schools that compete in IPDA specifically are competing in 1v1 IPDA debate. Uh, the IPDA national tournament occurred a couple weeks ago. It was actually the same weekend that we ran at the ACC debate championship. Uh, and I know that at least three local schools competed in the IPDA national tournament. Uh, when I say three local schools, three other colleges in Georgia. Um, so there's not a substantial push for 2v2 debate, or at least not from what I've seen in my research. Um, the key parts about parliamentary debate and what makes it substantially different from things like Lincoln-Douglas debate, the ACC debate championship, and policy debate uh, is that your topic that you're debating every single round is going to change. So it's not likely that you'll ever debate the same resolution twice, uh, or in the sense not a very specific wording twice. Uh, in broad strokes, a lot of the resolutions that you'll see in parliamentary debate will fall into one of several broad categories. You'll typically see a lot of things about immigration or health care reform or voter rights or workers' rights. Uh, really any of the big hot topic issues that you see in both, you know, United States debate as well as, you know, world debate, what are the big hot button issues of the day, uh, you see a lot of ver different variations on the same topics. Uh, but that being said, the actual individual wording of the resolution will change every single round um, to the point that you'll never actually debate the same topic twice in one tournament. Whereas with a policy debate format or an LD debate format, there's usually one specific topic that's given at the beginning of the fall semester, and all schools will debate the same topic every single round for every single tournament for the entirety of the year. So it's more of a breadth of debate versus depth of debate. For policy debate, you get really in-depth into that one specific topic, whereas parliamentary debate lets you get into a lot of different topics um, throughout the course of just one debate tournament, uh, which means that it favors more of a breadth of knowledge where you have to be very familiar with a wide variety of topics in order to be competitive. Um, IPDA specifically, you're actually given five resolutions per round, uh, and then the affirmative and negative will take turns, starting with the negative, striking one resolution until one remains. Uh, so you parse it down from five resolutions down to the one resolution, and that one resolution is what you will debate. Uh, so it's fair in the sense that the negative gets to get out of two topics that they don't want to talk about, and the AF gets to get out of two topics that they don't want to talk about, and you generally end up with a middle ground topic that both debaters are comfortable 
debating in some sort of sense. Uh, and then you repeat that for the second round, the third round. So uh, by the end of the... Do the Neganaf know that they're at Neganaf before they start striking? At the point that the topics are released. So what will typically happen at the debate tournament so is that uh, usually everyone gets together in a centralized location. Uh, and the pairings will be announced first. So before any topic resolution occurs uh, or topic announcement occurs, you know which side of the resolution you'll be on and what team you're debating against. Uh, so when the resolutions are provided, uh, the negative team knows that they're the negative team, the AF team knows that the AF team. The negative team always strikes first. Uh, in the case of IPDA, you typically have about 30 minutes to prep for the debate. Uh, so the affirmative team has 30 minutes to get their case together. The negative team has 30 minutes to start prepping. Uh, one of the key During parts of prep time. Sorry to interrupt you. During that no, go prep for it. time, um, I've heard with some tournaments there's there's limited access to electronics or the internet. What what are the rules for that prep? I think it varies by tournament. Um, I can't speak too much to IPDA since I never really competed in it, but uh, with regard to evidence, uh, specifically, this kind of goes to this accessible point that I'll be making. Uh, IPDA is supposed to be, and I'm going to put this in quotes like in the presentation, it's supposed to be more accessible. Um, it's designed to be judged by a layperson in the sense that anyone who comes into uh, the debate world should be able to just come in and judge it. It's supposed to be one of those public debate kind of styles where uh, anyone just judges it and says, okay, well, this side makes sense and this side doesn't make sense. And it's supposed to be more logic-based. Uh, as a result of that, hard evidence is not allowed to be brought into the round and technical theory arguments are generally discouraged in IPDA. Um, and so when I, we talk hard evidence, and this generally also applies for all parliamentary debate in general. Uh, so hard evidence would be like a printed article or having your laptop there and being able to look up something or have all of your debate files like on a hard drive that you're accessing in the middle of uh, the debate round. So like in a policy debate style or an LD debate style, you'll have these debate cards, which will have like very specific citations from like a professor or a research institution that say something. You have a bunch of statistics and you have a bunch of arguments, you know, hundreds and hundreds of arguments that you've already researched and have prepped on your hard drive or in your debate files and whatnot. Uh, in parley debate in general, you're only allowed to bring in physically to the room uh, a copy of the rules and regulations for that governing body, um, as well as any sort of um, argumentation that you've prepped during that 30 minutes. Usually it's required to be handwritten. Uh, I don't know how with all the virtual debates that have been going on, if that's really changed. Um, but uh, at least as recently as, you know, five years ago in general, parley debate, you had to handwrite all of your arguments, your evidence and whatnot, and you weren't allowed to bring in any printed materials or any books or your laptop with hard evidence on it. Um, so in general, it's designed to not be as evidence intensive as, say, policy debate or Lincoln-Douglas debate. Uh, so your general format for your IPDA debate uh, starts with an affirmative constructive. That's your five-minute speech. The goal of the affirmative constructive is to generally set up, uh, A, your definitions of your debate, uh, B, how the judge should be weighing the round, uh, some sort of debating criterion, uh, and uh, then C is your general contentions for the debate and what the judge should be voting on. Uh, there's a cross-examination in IPDA by the negative against the affirmative uh, for two minutes following the first affirmative speech. You then have the negative constructive. That'll last for six minutes. Uh, general, so generally, it's uh, going to be a combination of the negative team uh, establishing their definitions or counter-definitions, if you disagree with that, provided by the affirmative, uh, setting up their alternative voting criterion. If there's a separate voting criterion that need, that they think it should be proposed uh, and setting up their own unique counter arguments. Uh, additionally, some of the time in the constructor for the negative ought to be spent responding uh, to the line by line case that the affirmative team has laid out. Uh, then you have a cross examination by the affirmative against the negative team. Uh, that follows immediately by a three minute affirmative rebuttal. Uh, it's three minutes, so you've got to be very clear and very parsed down on what you're wanting to argue here. Uh, you have six minutes of constructive to cover, so you really need to work here to crystallize 
what the key arguments are going to be and get kind of as much line by line in as you really can on the negative case while also making sure that you respond to the arguments in your affirmative case. Uh, you have a, then a negative rebuttal. It's five minutes uh, where you're responding to both the affirmative rebuttal, bringing your points through, and really crystallizing the round. In general, you're looking to put forth what are called voters, which are the key reasons why the judge needs to be voting for your team at the end of the round, if the individual at the end of the round. And that follows with what's called the AF summary, or it could also be considered to be a second affirmative rebuttal, uh, where the affirmative is, again, going against what the negative said, and then extending their arguments and trying to crystallize these voters for the judge. In general, uh, you don't have, um, in general, it's, it's not looked well upon for any of the rebuttals to contain new argumentation. So if you are in the affirmative rebuttal, it would not be, it would typically be frowned upon to bring in, say, a new contention, like a fourth argument or a third contention, depending on how many you had originally. Um, all of the key arguments that should be talked about in the round really ought to be brought up during the constructive and the negative, the affirmative constructive and the negative constructive. Uh, and the rebuttals are really kind of sussing out those arguments and furthering them, developing them, extending them. Uh, bringing more in-depth analysis to an argument is fine, provided it's not an entirely new argument. So uh, total time is 25 minutes. You've got 11 minutes of speeches for each debater, plus the two for cross-examination. Um, I didn't do that math right. It's 26 minutes. That's okay. Uh, so the only other thing here to note that's kind of different between the ACC debate championship that y'all competed in uh, is that you have uh, longer negative speeches, um, but that the AF bookends the debate. So the AF has both the first and the last word. Uh, so that's the AF advantage. The neg advantage is their individual speech times are longer, which allows them to cover more arguments than the AF. So um, that's kind of the argument for why the sides are even at first and last word has value, but being able to spread your arguments out and cover more arguments because you have longer speech times is supposed to even that out. Um, so that's kind of a common theme in some of these uh, debate styles is that um, the AF usually starts and closes the debate, but the negative counters that by having longer consolidated speech times. I mean, um, so. back in England when we do debate, it, it was similar that the, the, the um, the house, as we would call it, would always begin and end the debate. Yep. And there was a lot of emphasis on this idea that they should use their last speech as a summary and conclusion yep. as much as possible. Um, and don't introduce any new counterpoints, just summarize where you are at that point was, was a lot of what we were taught, especially because the, the time was quite finite in that last speech. Um, so that, that makes sense to me. Uh, so talking uh, about MPDA, it's uh, typically a two-person versus, versus two-person debate. Uh, they are called the government and the opposition, specifically the government team. First speaker is called the prime minister, and the second speaker is called the member of the government, PM and MG for short. Uh, and then the opposition team is the leader of opposition and the member of opposition, LO and MO for short. Uh, so like the other forms of parliamentary debate, the resolution changes every round. Um, you get one resolution each round, so it's set. So the resolution is the resolution. There's no strikes. There's no options. It just is what you're debating, uh, and you're stuck on that side, whether or not it's a resolution that's particularly fair or one that you particularly are prepared to debate. So you have to be uh, – you aren't going to be afforded the opportunity like you would an IPDA in order to get rid of resolutions that are unfavorable to your background or unfavorable to the side of the debate that you're debating on. Um, the prep time you all have for each round is also smaller than that of IPDA. That's offset by the fact that you have a second person, really, to help you prep. Um, but it's typically – the time for prep varies by tournament. It's typically 15 minutes plus the amount of time it takes to walk to the furthest, like, classroom being used uh, for the debate. So typically, they, everyone just calls it 20 minutes, and they call it a day. Um, so that's usually how long you have after the resolution to prep your affirmative case. Um, sounds it can, a lot like, oh, oh, I was just saying, it sounds a lot like uh, extemporaneous speech where you get your topic and you have, well, we have 30 minutes to prepare, but this is even, I mean, I guess even like 15 or 20 minutes and then you kind of practice your speech and you get in there and you make your arguments, I guess. Sounds pretty similar. Yeah. Yep, exactly. It's very similar to extemporaneous speaking where you 
are very much benefited and inclined to have, uh, you know, I, I like to say you have a lot of their, your arguments already prepped and prepared, right? So, um, so that when you get a topic about insert random topic, you're not completely blindsided. Uh, some of the worst debate rounds that I've had in the MPDA style are on rounds that the topic completely took me and my partner by surprise, and we had no idea what we were doing. We had to spend, you know, uh, 15 of our 20 minutes just figuring out what the topic was even asking us, right? Uh, you know, for instance, we, one of our first terms, we had a topic about, uh, you know, mountaintop removal. And I'm sitting here like, what the heck is mountaintop removal? And uh, it, it's literally removing the top of mountains to get to coal. But the debate tournament was in, uh, you, was you that a co access? You have access to the internet during your During this, typically, yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, mean, this I tournament. Guess, I guess it's just me getting used to, but I am very used to being given a topic and being able to come up with a bunch of arguments, even if I don't know anything about the topic. Yeah, yeah. So the, the topics are very, you usually will have access to the internet. Uh, and in this case, like we were at a debate tournament at a college in the Appalachian Mountains where this had been a hot topic, local, regional issue for like decades. And we're sitting here like we have no idea what this is. So um, you get you get prep time. Um, Just it's to interject, good. Sean, I'm, no, I'm going to have to drop off the call in a couple of minutes because I have another meeting at 7. Sure. Um, so I'm going to make you the host when I leave. Okay. And can you just, when you're done doing the main pre presentation, can you just hit the stop recording button? Sure thing. All right, great. We may go ahead and just record the question portion afterwards as well. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Um, so, uh, contrary to IPDA, uh, IPDA likes to call out the MPDA for being too technical. Um, things like topicality and abuse arguments and these technical theory arguments, um, the IPDA like frowns upon. NPDA as a whole is more uh, uh, acceptable to those sorts of arguments that are made more in like the policy debate world than the parley debate world. Um, that's also kind of regionalized, right? So like when you go to like a national tournament in the Midwest or on the Pacific Coast, they can get to be very technical. Um, whereas when you're talking about parley debate in the Southeast region, um, you know, Tennessee, Kentucky, Georgia, Florida, um, some of those technical arguments are still not necessarily accepted. So uh, depending on your judge, how you approach the round is going to vary substantially round by round. Um, there's also no... Uh, sorry to interrupt, but an NPDA also, is there any um, evidence allowed or is it still just like it's this, without, in general, it's yeah. the same thing as IPDA in which you're supposed to come into the round with only what you've prepared and written down within the round. Um, okay. So, uh, you so know. Like, sorry, like in the round, are you allowed to like, let's say the topic is, I don't know, carbon tax. Are you allowed to Google like for Forbes article or whatever that has um, support for or against it? Like, is that allowed? Yeah, so in general, you should be... The, the general standard is what a reasonable person know or have like a quick immediate access to this information. Okay. So um, it gets a little funky when, like as Georgia Tech, it's gotten funky before when I'm talking about things like space-based solar power satellites that yeah. like I'm like taking classes on and have like really like great familiarity with our technical sense and our opponents are during the headlights and don't know what they're talking about. And then the yeah. judges during the headlights and says, I don't know what you're talking about. And then you just lose the round. So um, okay. it, it, it can be, you know, it, yeah, it, it can get a little dicey sometimes, but in general, uh, common thought stuff is, um, there's also no cross-examination in MPDA. Uh, IPDA has the cross-examination, MPDA doesn't. Um, you do have what's called flex time, which is supposed to be used for both prepping your arguments, and you can also ask your opponent's questions during this time. Um, this is new since I competed, so I'm not entirely sure how this actually works, but it is uh, supposed, it's like kind of like a mini cross X slash prepping your arguments. Additionally, one thing that's present here is that what's called a point of information where you can stand and like not like interrupt your opponent, but you stand and they acknowledge you. You can ask them a question about their speech while they're actually speaking and giving their speech. Um, that's called a point of information. The first and last minutes of each speech are protected in that you can't ask questions during that time. Uh, and then you can't ask questions during the uh, uh, during like a rebuttal. 
Um, so your general format, your first affirmative constructive, or here it's called the PMC or the prime minister constructive, we're just going to call it the affirmative and the negative for purposes of ease, uh, is seven minutes. Uh, there's this negative flex time, which the negative can ask questions and prep their arguments for two minutes. Uh, then a negative constructive for eight minutes, uh, and the affirmative flex time, which is the same as the negative flex time, but for the affirmative. Uh, a second affirmative constructive uh, with one minute of negative flex time, a second negative constructive uh, for eight minutes, the opposition rebuttal. Uh, I guess that's negative. I'll need to change that. But yeah, the negative uh, rebuttal followed by affirmative flex time for one minute, followed by an affirmative rebuttal. Um, so the total amount of time that each team is speaking here is 20 minutes, but you'll note specifically that um, the first affirmative constructive is only seven minutes and all the rest of the constructive speeches are eight. That's offset because the final affirmative rebuttal is five minutes. Uh, so uh, again, you see this common theme where the affirmative team is both starting and ending the debate um, and the negative has the longer speech to get around that. Um, in this case, it's actually two back-to-back -back speeches. That's typically called the negative block um, where they have an eight minute constructive by the second speaker and then a four minute rebuttal by the first speaker. In parley debate, it's traditional that, uh, I guess it's traditional slash required that the person who gives the first constructive also gives the rebuttal, uh, which makes this unique in the sense that the two debaters on the team are not actually speaking for the same amount of time, right? So if you're the first speaker, you're gonna be speaking for 12 minutes uh, versus the second speaker only speaks for eight. Uh, and so depending on uh, how, how your team dynamic is, making the decision for who's the first speaker versus the second speaker is, is one of the more important decisions that you'll be making. Um, not necessarily even by a round by round case, but or round by yeah, not even by round by round case, but in general when you're doing prep with your uh, partner, uh, how to actually approach who generally does the speaking. Um, if you have a speaker who's really good at extemporaneous speaking and writing a case, uh, you know, on the fly, typically that person is a, a stronger uh, first affirmative speaker because they'll be better prepped to. Uh, give a seven minute constructive without having too much written down on a sheet of paper. And then the more technical debater, the person who's better at line by line is better off usually as a second affirmative or the person who's doing the first negative speaker uh, so that they can do the better line by line and set up the next speaker, their partner for um, their next speech. So total time for the round is 46 minutes plus the 20 minutes of the round release. So usually these last about an hour, a little over an hour. Um, next is kind of like GPDA, kind of mentioned it. It's the Georgia Parliamentary Debate Association. It ran from 2010 to 2018, uh, follows the same layouts and rules as the MPDA style debate, uh, and had a lot of regional participation from local state schools, uh, specifically Georgia Tech, Mercer, Morehouse, Valdosta State, Piedmont, North Georgia, Clark, Atlanta, Spelman, Covenant College, and Truett College. Um, so those are all schools that have participated or have expressed interest in, in uh, like this MPDA style debate. Uh, they host a championship or did host a rotating championship at each of the different schools uh, from 2010 to 2018. Uh, 2019 got a little murky uh, with stuff going on. So there wasn't a state tournament that year. And then 2020 was COVID. So um, there's potentially interest in some of these schools kicking this off again. Uh, and we may see where that goes. But it, it follows the same format right now as MPDA style debate. Uh, the last debate style I'll cover here is BP slash worlds debate. So this is a 2v2v2v2 debate. You have eight people in the round competing against each other, um, four different teams of two. Uh, so you will have, you know, four different schools competing with two people representing each school typically um, is, is what would happen. I don't think there's anything that would prevent uh, like two teams from being from one school and then two teams being from another school. Um, that would just be a little weird, uh, but I don't think there's anything that would like expressly prohibit that. And that probably is actually commonplace in like out rounds where preventing teams from uh, hitting is just not possible. Uh, so the four different teams are what's called the opening government, which is the prime minister and the deputy prime minister, uh, the opening opposition, which is the leader of the opposition and the deputy leader of the opposition. Uh, the closing government, which is the member of government and the government whip, and the closing opposition, which is the member of opposition, the opposition whip. Uh, instead of awarding a single win to an opposition team or the government team, the judge ranks these teams from one to four instead of awarding just a single win. So um, if you consider it like a speech event that you may have competed in where you have the different speakers all speaking and they get ranked, 
Uh, same situation here where the judges rank it. The judge ranks the teams one through four instead of awarding a single win. So that's comparable to a speech event that you would compete in where you have your individual competitors and the judges ranking them, uh, except that they're ranking the team and they're ranking... Uh, that does mean that they're ranking the government teams individually and they're ranking the opposition teams individually. So even though there are two government teams and two opposition teams, they do not work together and they are ranked separately. So they are actually not cooperating in any sense. So if you were the opening government team, you are not coordinating with or cooperating with the closing government team in any capacity throughout the course of the round. Are you there? No. Wait, are you in here? Okay, yeah. So, uh, in general, your uh, formats are uh, typically, I guess it varies by tournament, but you're looking at about seven minutes per speech. Uh, so, uh, each debater only speaks once. That's different from both IPDA and uh, your MPDA style debate, where there are certain debaters or speakers who speak times. Um, but for BP, everyone only speaks once. It's the prime minister, leader of opposition, deputy prime minister, and deputy leader of the opposition. So, those are your... Uh, your, your first teams, the first government team and the first opposition team, those are your top of the debates. Um, and the generally those are the teams that are, uh, the, the general duties of those teams are to set up the debate, set up the framing, set up the definitions, and then also, uh, you know, put forth the main primary arguments that are going to be talked about throughout the course of the round. Um, that's followed by the member of government, member of opposition, government whip, and the opposition whip. These are at the bottom of the debate. And that they are basically kind of your rebuttals. Uh, it's a little awkward then or a little weird then because uh, like the government whip and the member of the government are extending arguments that they didn't actually make in the first place since the top of the debate government team actually came up with those contentions initially. So generally the second half is going to be rebutting uh, arguments extending arguments and then also should be bringing in at least one new the members uh of the government the member of the opposition should be bringing in like at least one new opposition and one new government argument uh for the judge to take into consideration um so total time of speech is about 56 minutes per round um plus the amount of time to prep the case of the start uh which is probably usually about 15 to 20 minutes i'm not actually sure uh, i think that varies by tournament specifically so um, general questions, what is the resolution? Um, they come in many different shapes or forms. They can be broad, they can be specific. In general, for all these parliamentary debates, the affirmative team has the rights to define. Um, in all of the rules, they kind of talk about how the negative team is allowed to like challenge an AF interpretation of the topic. It kind of depends a lot on the judge and the tournament style. It's happening in like BP debate. The AF has like basically divine right to define the resolution as they see fit. Um, if you are really good at arguing about topic interpretations, you can win on topicality a lot in MPDA style debate. Not so much in IPDA or uh, BP debate where the judge may just say like, well, AF gets to say what they want to say and that's it. So it can get a little wonky. You kind of sometimes you got to hope that you don't get uh, a real funky resolution. Um, IPDA because the teams get to strike the resolutions kind of solves for this a little bit. So uh, some general examples just to show kind of the different breadth of uh, topics you can get. All the topics I'm going to show you here as examples are topics that were used at the national MPDA tournament between the years 2008 and 2010. Uh, so the USFG, uh, United States federal government, should amend the Internal Revenue Code to eliminate tax exemptions for religious institutions in the United States. The very specific resolution gives you a very specific actor. It's the United States federal government, and they're doing something very specific. So it's kind of a specific resolution. Uh, or the USSC, the United States Supreme Court, should reverse its decision in Citizens United versus the Federal Election Commission. So another very specific resolution. Uh, you would kind of consider these to be uh, what's called a policy resolution where you have a specific actor doing a specific thing and usually the affirmative team will provide some sort of plan um, that says this is what's actually going to be happen, this is what's actually going to happen uh, on the affirmative side and what we're actually going to be defending. So it gets more specific uh, when you're doing like the MPDA style on these cases. It's very, these can be like very specific technical topics. Um, the Actor in these resolutions doesn't necessarily even have to be uh, a uh, the United States federal government or a government in general. For instance, the Roman Catholic Church should establish new standards for ordination to the priesthood. 
uh, is an instance of the affirmative case being the agent on the affirmative side being the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, and um, this could also be argued not necessarily as a policy action. The should here may not necessarily dictate that a plan is required. It may be like a, oh, this is, we value this, and so this is why we should affirm the resolution. It can be more of a value proposition if you're familiar with like NLD debate style. Um, you can also have something kind of like a fact-based debate on the issue of unemployment. The United States federal government should rediscover Roosevelt. This is sort of like a metaphorical topic. What does rediscover Roosevelt mean? Are we talking about Teddy Roosevelt? Are we talking about Franklin Delano Roosevelt? Um, and that's something that the affirmative team gets to kind of define in the resolution. Uh, this is an example where something like topicality could come up. If the affirmative team starts talking about why we're rediscovering the policies of Theodore Roosevelt, the negative team could make an argument why we should be talking about the rediscovering the policies of Franklin Delano Roosevelt because he was like the president of labor and the president of employment rights, and uh, that's more contextual to the resolution. Would be an example of uh, why the definitions can be uh, very different and why these topics can be kind of broad. So this would be kind of like a broad resolution, even though you're kind of looking at uh, you know a potentially like you're, you're probably looking at labor, and you're probably looking at a progressive president's policy uh, as part of that framework. Uh, and something like this uh, would be, could be a topic where you say access to potable water should be a human right. That's just kind of a fact-based yes, no, should be, shouldn't be. You could also frame it in terms of a policy resolution where, uh, you know, maybe a country is going to increase the potable water access or potable water rights to its citizens. Uh, or improve their water infrastructure. Um, something like this house should take action to protect workers' occupational safety. And a common thread you see with some of the IPDA and MPDA debates will be uh, that you have this house as an actor. And uh, one of the things that the affirmative team needs to do at the top of their case is always define who this house is. And this house could be anything from uh, the United States federal government, it could be NATO, it could be the United Nations, it could be literally the four people sitting in the debate round um, having a discussion about what we as society value. Uh, it could be, you know, Georgia Tech could be this house. Uh, it could be, um, you know, a specific person. I've seen cases argue, argued where this house was just the president of the United States themselves. Um, so uh, defining this house is always one of the most critical things and one of the most contentious things that the affirmative team has to do. Um, and you can also get resolutions that are just resolved to oust the elephant. And very metaphorical, what's the elephant? Is it the elephant in the room? Or is this a metaphor for the Republican Party? Uh, and what do we mean by oust? Do we mean get rid of an elephant? Do we mean to take steps to fix the problem? Um, and so you can get very broad, very metaphorical topics like this. Um, and so in general, that kind of lends parliamentary debate to being more extemporaneous, more impromptu than um, something like a policy debate or a Lincoln-Douglas debate or even the ACC debates where the topics are more defined and you have essentially infinite prep time to prep for a topic that you are well ahead of, uh, well aware of ahead of time. So. Wait, I'm sorry, I don't, wait, I'm sorry. I'm a little confused about the house the elephant topic. Like, mm -hmm. How is that a topic? What do you talk about? Well, that's just the topic. The topic would be uh, resolved, oust the elephant. <laughs> Wait, can you give me an example? Uh, uh, I mean, you could, uh, uh, so this topic is actually from the 2000, I want to say it's from the 2008 or 2009 uh, National Parliamentary Debate Association Championship. Um, so, uh, you know, you can't really do anything about it like now, but like, I would say, some, like, so for instance, as the affirmative team, I would say uh, we're going to oust the elephant and contextually oust in this. All right, so if I'm giving a debate case, my debate case here is uh, resolved, oust the elephant. Uh, we pro for the following definitions for the judge. Uh, observation one, the first definition is oust. Oust means to remove. In this case, we're removing a barrier to something that needs to be, needs to happen. 
Uh, observation two here is elephant. In this case, we're going to say the elephant here is elephant in the room. But additionally, we're taking this a step further. An elephant is something big. It's something that blocks progress. If you are driving down the road or walking down the road and there's an elephant in your way, you can't proceed and you can't move forward. So this entire round here is a metaphor for removing the block to progress. And the specific block to progress that we're going to talk about here is the filibuster in the United States Senate. And so we're going to offer contention observation two here which is a net benefits criteria we're going to weigh the world of the affirmative versus the world of the against the status quo or competitive counter plan from the negative team and our observation three is our plan text so in this case the united states senate will amend their rules and remove and eliminate the filibuster okay that contention sense. one or advantage one so on this case, I would probably run it in this, and that would be almost verbatim. What I'd probably clean it up a little bit because I'd probably have a little bit of prep time to really like write stuff down. I'm kind of like ad hocing off the cuff. Um, but on this kind of topic, I would probably say we're going to remove the filibuster. That's the affirmative okay, case. So um, if this had been sculpts that debate, sculpts the topic, but it's more open ended because they're tasked with defining the contention and the specifics of it, and the negative then just kind of negates whatever they say. They don't try yeah, to yeah. define it. The elephant may say that this is not uh, this is not that, that it's not predictable for us to have talked about the filibuster. The affirmative answer is that the filibuster is currently being entrenched by the Republican Party, who is symbolized by the actual element uh, <laughs> elephant. When we talk about you know political uh, like cartoon interpretations, yeah, like yeah, sure. the Democrats are the donkeys and the Republicans are the elephants. So this is clearly talking about ousting something Republican, and right now yeah, sure. that's clearly the uh, the filibuster. You know, if this resolution if this resolution were two or three years ago, you'd talk about ousting the elephant, the affirmative, predictable affirmative case would be impeach Donald Trump. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. So, uh, in 2008, I don't know what the oust the elephant was. Maybe it's, you know, remove Mitch McConnell as Senate Majority Leader. Uh, I don't remember if he was Majority Leader in 2008, but you know? Yeah, yeah. Or I guess if it was 2008, the 2008 elections, oust the elephant would have been like, the United States public will elect, you know, Barack Obama as President of the United States. Would be a would be a plan. Oh, yeah, so, thank you. Yeah, thank you. yep. So defining your words and defining the definitions, uh, a resolution is, is like one of the most key parts of that partly debate. Um, that's really kind of what I had prepared. Um. Oh, uh, that's kind of like the unique stuff about partly debate. Some of the other stuff about uh, its construction and whatnot. Um, how you want to be like managing your case and writing your case, you're usually looking for um, various contentions, and those contentions usually include things like, you know, what are the harms currently happening? Um, what are, um, why does your plan outweigh? And, and a lot of those are stock arguments that are made in both policy debate, LD debate, and parley debate. Like in general, why is the affirmative right here? So any kind of like specific questions? Y'all still there? Yeah, I'm still yep. here. Yep. Yep. Uh, I actually have to though, get going, so. but uh, yeah, thank you so much for the presentation, and yep. uh, I think uh, I'll help.